the other direction, just so you know, of, um, you know, progressive callers call into conservative shows, this type of thing. It's exactly the same thing, just in reverse. People tend to run on emotions, and that's why rhetoric and politics is so important. Uh, so when you say Republicans don't know much about the border, I would counter and say neither do progressives. Most, in fact, I would just say most I'm people. Progressive. What's that? I'm progressive. Yeah, I know, but you knowing a lot about the border does not mean progressives know a lot about the border in general. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm teaching. Yeah, so um, what is your stance, if you, if I may ask, on what U.S. policy should be on the southern border? In regards to what? Immigration and dealing well, yeah, with illegal immigrants. Yeah, and that's I can ask you specifically what are you talking about because the border is very complicated so are you talking about the influx and dealing with my well i just told you i'm talking about policy specifically in dealing with illegal immigrants well illegal are the ones that are convicted the ones coming into the united states haven't been convicted of a charge well you can be doing something this is kind of pedantry right because you can be doing something illegal even if you're not convicted of it well, you can be charged with doing something illegal. It doesn't make it illegal. No, you can be says. doing something illegal, even if you're never charged for it. So, for instance, you can break into somebody's house, never be charged, but you did something illegal. You have to be found guilty in order. No, for it you to still be, would yes. be doing something illegal, even in if the United you're. United States, Andrew, are we not innocent until proven guilty? By the court system, that's true. But philosophically, it's matters. not true. No, no, no. It's not what matters because law is is only built around this idea that we must find you innocent until proven guilty for it to be fair. That does not mean in reality you have not done something illegal, though. So you, con you convict somebody based off feelings, but not in the, and not in the justice system. I don't, well, so I, I'm, I'm just, I want to be sure that we're not speaking past each other. Do you agree that if a man goes in the street and uh, unalives another man, in a way which is unjustified, he just feels like doing it, that he did something illegal even though he has not actually been prosecuted for it yet. Do you agree that that's true? Well, you got to look at it. There's a lot of confounding things you have to think about. What are the confounding so things that you have to that, think about? Well, it could have been a heat of passion. It could have been No, 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 but it's baked into the hypothetical that he unalived, unjustified. So he, he basically... Uh, I can't say the word, but it starts with an M, right? Well, it's alleged, and I'm a person of rule and law, and mm -hmm. in the United States, you're innocent until proven guilty. Yes, and according to the law, guilty, yes. Then you did, then you broke the law. Yeah, yeah, according to the law, that's true. However, somebody could be committing a crime in front of you, which gives you justification to do things you could not ordinarily do to them, and they have not been prosecuted of anything. They've not been charged with a single crime. They've not been found guilty of anything. However, if somebody's conducting a crime in front of you, how come you then have justification to do things you could not ordinarily do to them if they were not committing a crime, sir? Because I believe in the Constitution of the United States. I believe that we all have rights, including those that commit or allegedly commit heinous crimes. And we built the adversarial justice system so we can confront the alleged charges. And once we convict them, now we can... Uh, definitely this does not uh, answer my punishment. question. So let me restate the, the Let me restate let me restate the question. If somebody breaks I into your home, are you justified you are in defending yourself? Off a feeling about something that you probably don't know exactly what happened. Okay, if somebody breaks into your home, are you justified then in defending yourself versus if somebody you invite into your home, you're not then justified in, you know, using well, you're force. Talking about my curtilage. There's a law that protects me Right, but nobody's been prosecuted. Nobody's been found guilty of anything. Nobody's been been prosecuted. Nobody's been they they haven't even that had a single right. And I'm not being charged with anything, and if I do get charged with something for defending my home, I go to court. Well, and it, I could be found guilty or not. Guilty sure, that's that true. Point. That's true. But but this goes back to your earlier point that you can be doing something illegal, whether or not here, here, you're ever just, charged. No, you can't evade yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you need to answer great, it. Andrew. Hold on a second. I don't need to answer anything. No, I'm you're just going to run away from it. No, no. I'm going to tell you this much. Okay. okay. I'm very familiar with court systems and practices. Mm -hmm. You are innocent until proven guilty in the United States. And I think a lot of people lose uh, sight of that. Trump was innocent until he was proven guilty. And he was proven guilty by a jury of his peers. Okay. Now, somebody in these hypotheticals 
uh, witnesses somebody doing something, they charge them with a crime and they have to be seen in court. They can plead or they can say uh, not guilty and then go through the process. Right. No, that's so not that's correct. That's not America actually correct. So so let's let's correct. so here I'll, I'll demonstrate it for you. Do you agree that if, if, if a woman is being attacked sexually in front of me, that I can then do something to the assailant of her, even though he's never been convicted of the crime of the essay which he's conducting? Do you agree that that's but true or not, not? You're not convicting them. I didn't say that. I said he's somebody. doing something illegal. You're not understanding he's doing something illegal, correct? You're defending somebody else, yes. And so that person's doing something illegal, correct? But I'm talking about the court Just system. please answer my question. Okay. No, Andrew. You're, you're not going to answer. You're not going to answer it. No, no, hold on a second. I'm going to answer your fucking question. Yeah, sure you are. Go ahead. In this scenario, somebody is being assaulted. I can come in and defend somebody else. That person that was assaulting that person heads to court. Yeah. They're presumed innocent until proven guilty, regardless if I defended that person. Then it goes to the court process, adversarial contest. And if they're found guilty, then they did, in fact, do what you alleged them to do, to have done. Yeah, right. But none of that now, is what's in dispute, though. In the court yeah, but law. none of that's what we're disputing here. So Sorry, the, dis Andrew, the dispute is over. Daddy Trump is found. Yeah, I didn't mention Trump at all. I don't. I, yeah, yeah, that's great. I didn't say anything so about Trump. So I've not said anything that is false. Yeah. OK, but you did. So in the beginning of this, the, re off on the reason that this it. the reason that this uh, argument spurned off is because you said a person an illegal immigrant cannot be doing something illegal until they are convicted. And then when we, when I press you, with? when I press you, would you let me there, finish Andrew? my argument first, please? It's a dumb argument. Then I'm let me make you, it, and the then you can dismantle it. Comes into the United States. I'm sorry, you can't, you can't time. let me make the argument because you're terrified of the argument. Is that right, sir? No, go ahead. Go okay, ahead great. So argument. anyway, so your argument was somebody cannot be doing something illegal until they're convicted. That thus, illegal immigrants are not illegal. However, when I press you on that logically, we determine wait. A second people can indeed do things illegal all the time and that you can then uh, create actions against those people even though they've never had due process the same exact thing happens on the southern border same exact thing you can be committing a crime even though you're not found guilty and you can be dealt with as a person who is under suspicion of committing a crime they're most certainly under suspicion of committing a crime which is illegally breaking and entering into the united states is that it okay so here's what I'll say about that. There are American citizens that cross into the United States entry without inspection between the ports of entry. And we cannot deny an American citizen into the United States, regardless of where they're coming in at. So you're saying that they're, they are illegal when in fact some people are not illegal after we vet them. Yeah, but even so if I grant the out, even if I granted hey, the I'll outliers, I thought I'm sorry. I thought you were done. You Go finish. ahead. Yeah, you, you, I'm not done yet. Well, when you have a long pause, I assume you're done. I'm not done yet. That's okay, that's the way I talk. Right? Okay, well, I didn't know that. Go ahead. Cool. So, in the court system, if we're not going to charge them with anything, how are you going to refer to or refer to them as being illegal? Now, when you say illegally present in the United States. You've already convicted them of entry without inspection. Do you know, Andrew, the law that they are breaking at the border? What's the law they're breaking at the border? I'm asking you, expert. I didn't say I was an expert. Okay. So you're trying to say that they're illegal, but you don't know what makes it illegal to enter into the United States. Well, I, I don't know what the penal code is for breaking and entering in Michigan, but I can still tell you when someone's breaking and entering. Okay. So tell me what... What hang on, hang on. It doesn't logically follow, sir, that I can determine what is breaking and entering even though I don't know what the penal code for it is. Is that true or false? That's false. It's false? You, I just Yeah, because you don't know if they're an American citizen. I see. So if somebody breaks into my home, I got to say, finish. wait a second, man. Why I don't know the penal code. I can't. Because I don't know the penal code, I can't defend myself, sir. Code, I can't. <laughs> because I don't know the penal code, I can't defend myself. I'm here for a civil conversation. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, cope, dude. So I'll tell you this much. In the United States, you're innocent until proven guilty. There are an American citizens 
that come into the United States in between the ports of entry, and we can't not we cannot deny them entry. <laughs> so we have to vet them. We have to determine their citizenship. And at some point or another, they're going to have to see the judge. And the judge determines whether or not their entry without inspection. It is a misdemeanor crime under 8 U.S.C. 1325. Plain and simple. So just because you sound confident and you try to overspeak, it doesn't mean you have any experience at the border. Don't need it. You understand? Don't have to have it. So. It's not necessary, Coper. All right. I'm here for a civil conversation. And if you can't handle it, then just leave. He's there to prattle. Or I'll boot you up. Yeah, there we go. What's up, Clips? Oh. You can't commit a crime unless you're found guilty of the crime. Logic 101, folks. You can't determine that somebody has broken into your house if you don't know the penal code. If you don't know the penal code, they just haven't broken in. They've committed no crime. Fucking, some of these people, I don't actually know how they function in society. I don't know how they function in society at all. I just, uh, I don't. Uh, why would a... I, there's a possibility there's God and spirit stuff, but I just don't believe it. To be true, there's other atheists that are more like they claim it doesn't exist. I, like, don't believe it exists. You don't, yo, you mean you just don't believe uh, that God I'm exists? Like, I, I'm more like agnostic, but I lean towards, I don't believe that God exists, but like he could exist. Yeah, can you help me out though? Um, uh, let us assume for a second before we dive into uh, the Christian faith, which you probably have many critiques. What's your answer to the cosmological argument for, uh, for God? And if you're, if you're uh, unfamiliar and need to be refreshed, the cosmological argument is that if we do a logical deduction backwards, uh, if we get past matter, uh, basically everything must have some sort of creator. Um, and it essentially reduces to, well, where did all of this stuff come from? What was the first mover? Yeah, we don't know. Like, nobody knows. I mean, people can put their guess in but yeah but logic wouldn't logic dictate that there was a creator there had to have been right because no, if no you deduce logic. it if you deduce it backward it's a contradiction to say that there could be creation absent a creator then you can't say that something right, always right, right, existed so, because that would also be a so, logical contradiction right so logic is just something that we created to use as a tool no, that, that can't be true, because if logic is a human construction, then you would have to be able to tell me that we can change no, the laws of logic. Mean? No, I know, it's just descriptive, right? So we've realized no, it's not descriptive. how the world operates, and we realize that there can't be a contradiction. No, nope, no, yeah, no, no, it's not because descriptive. Not it's, a, it's a metaphysical truth. If it's just a descriptor and it's a human construction, then you should be able to change the laws of logic. Why can't you change them? No, the same thing with the laws of, of, of nature, right? Like mm. gravity and stuff like that. No, we it's not the same. We figured out what it is. We don't, set, we don't set the gravity. We just figured it out. No, 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 no. Gravity is not a descriptive claim of anything. That's a material force which we can measure. You can't measure yeah, logic. Descriptive, it's descriptive. The laws of, of um, nature are descriptive. We're just pointing out what we were observing. Okay, we okay, but anything. hang on, hang on. If you're just pointing out what you're observing, then that would mean that the laws of logic were true. Yeah. Okay, so that's if they're, if they're hold, true, yeah, if they're true, you can't point to them. They're metaphysical, correct? Yeah, because they're a tool people use without people. No, they're not. Well, them. they can't just be a tool because there must be some ontological nature. You can't, people, you can't just change no it. Logic. Wait, but nobody uses logic if there's no people. It's just... No, no. In, in fact, the, the laws of logic would still necessarily have to exist absent people. No, if there was no okay, people... So let, let's, say, let's say there was nothing that was alive. Mm -hmm. Not even animals or anything, yep. right? The laws of logic would still there, have to exist. No, it would just be a... You know, something. Nope, nope. Was... Well, listen, I'll give you the argument. 
the laws of logic would still have to exist even absent people unless you can no, tell me or, bro you won't even let me give the argument do you even want me to give the argument so it must they must still exist because a contradiction still couldn't exist even absent people yeah but you could say the same thing about mathematics you could say that oh, that's right still that yep, those are metaphysical people. truths that exist even absent no, the human no, mind they, they were actually um things that we've discovered yeah, this discovered that. means that they existed absent us. No, it's a descriptive. It's it's like it's not descriptive. It's discovered. It's a tool. It's a way we measure. You know, it's a it's a pretty much just a tool we. Use. <clears throat> no, it's not just a tool we use. It's a okay, discovery. So well, okay, listen, so I'm trying to get into it with you. You're trying to claim that the laws of logic would not exist absent human thought, and I'm telling you that they actually have to. A contradiction still could not exist absent human thought. Uh, the law of excluded middle still could not exist absent human thought. And the law of identity still would have to exist absent human yeah, thought. All of those things would have to exist. The, it's a truth about the world that we observed and we um, use as a tool, right? Because if we know the, the laws of logic, excluded middle, non-contradiction, mm -hmm. and um, the law of identity. You mean these things that we discovered which were already were metaphysical truth? These are tools that we use to see if things are real because we've realized that these things are, are you know, they are, um, re they repeatedly give you <clears throat> correct, you know, answers. No, they, they exist though. They have to exist because you just yeah, said we just, hang, you. Hang, bro, you, you got to let me talk and just let you talk. You, they must exist because they're discovered. So absent human thought, they still exist. A contradiction cannot exist, even if no humans are around to perceive a contradiction cannot exist. Yeah, so um, it, concepts don't exist without a mind, so we wouldn't have, there wouldn't be a concept of logic. That's not I mean. a concept, though. It's a law. Yeah, it is. I mean, would gravity not, not would somebody, gravity not yeah. exist absent the human mind? I mean, there would be no... I, identification of what gravity was yeah but that's not my question it would just it, it's a, just a description yeah so it doesn't no matter. it's not a description it the law it would still exist even so rocks wouldn't exist without your mind rocks would exist okay rocks would exist and gravity would exist absent your mind right Yep. Because it's a law, we right? Observe, observe so so the laws well, of logic would also, we, bro, you got to let me finish, but the laws of logic would also exist absent your mind. No, no, look at, but if we're just going to the natural side, right? If we observe gravity and say, okay, this is descriptive of what's in the universe to figure out if it's true. It doesn't mean that we've created gravity or we can have any way to necessarily uh, tweak the gravity. That's right, because it exists even absent your mind. That's the point. So it's descriptive. We're just it's writing not down descriptive. What we it, see. Listen, it's you're you're giving a descriptor to what it is, but it exists even absent the descriptor. Right, but there's no laws of of these laws that you're talking about. There's no laws of logic. There's there with without people. No, there there actually has to be without people. Otherwise, why don't you tell me how oh, you can change the law of logic? even absent because people you use it it's a tool people use no I mean, that's well that's true it. but just because people use it doesn't There's mean people it, that are illogical too that don't use logic Not well well, well no no people all all, all people still have to utilize the laws of logic they cannot Some be changed aren't that smart and they actually believe in things that are yeah illogical. but you're you're talking about rational versus irrational not the laws of logic themselves the laws of logic themselves are immutable. They they cannot be. Some people are illogical. They might have a belief that isn't based off logic. Logic is a tool that we use. Yeah, but the, I'm not talking about people utilizing the process of logical argumentation or, um, you know, like modus different. ponens. I'm talking about the actual laws which govern logic themselves, that those are okay, actual so laws. Let's go there. Who do you think created Well, yeah, so this is where I'm trying to get to, is that if your epistemology is, well, the laws of logic exist because we use them, then I have to dispute this and say the laws of logic exist even if you do not use them. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that you could say the same thing with language. Oh, 
you know, because people. No, there's no laws of language which exist out absent human mind. You, neither is there mathematics. No, mathematics is something which is discovered, so mathematics would exist even absent the human mind. No, one plus one would always equal two, that. even absent your mind. No, you wouldn't be able to add them without a mind. You wouldn't, you, yeah, them. but but li- you wouldn't be able to add bro, two plus two. If, if bro, no you mind. wouldn't. You wouldn't need to, even if there was no human mind to interpret that one plus no, one equal. Mathematics would not exist. Bro, calm down. Even if there was no human, bro, calm down. Even if there was. Yeah, mathematics would not exist without anybody <laughs> present. So <laughs> mathematics is not. He just kicked me. Um, I get it. He's trying to say, oh, two plus two will always be four. Even, but you can't plus, you won't have two plus anything without a mind. So. Couldn't even get Anyways, to it. We you can believe that it. these laws of logic came from God. I believe they came from people over time. And this is Couldn't a way, even a get tool to that it. the second we start to get into the argument, verify when things are true, to make sense. And like I try to tell him, some people are illogical in their views, so doesn't it doesn't matter. mean that their people are just naturally, log- you know, use logic. It it's doesn't matter. <laughs> it's something. It, it, that- it doesn't matter. What a fucking idiot! No, that's not what the argument is. The argument is not moving into whether or not the laws of logic are socially constructed or not. It's called the transcendental argument. So we were moving from the cosmological argument to the transcendental argument, but we couldn't get anywhere because uh, he can't give an accounting for those laws. So he just kicked me instead. Very typical, by the way, when you start getting into it. Um, but diving into the uh, kind of the reparations, um, why why would you say that the the ancestors of slaves would deserve to have reparations from the United States government, knowing that the that it would be the taxpayer essentially? Be, be, Hang on, let me let, let me finish let me the question. Let me you. finish the question. Hang on, because it's going to be the taxpayer who foots that. The U.S. government doesn't have money. The taxpayer has money. I certainly wasn't responsible for the institution of slavery. Why would I need to pay for the reparations for it? Let me explain that to you. So I already knew what you were getting ready to say. That's why you didn't need to finish the question. (laughs) So anyway, um, the way it worked out was during slavery, black people, A, uh, were not only purchased and sold, right? But uh, they were also insured they built insurance com- uh, uh, companies. They they built the stock market itself. Okay, they built a lot of the things, the roads and things that we utilize today. They also made a lot of inventions that were uh, the patents were stolen, and the families of these people never got the money for these things. We hear about you know the the lady from KFC. We you know we hear about um, you know just so many black inventions that were taken and profited off of by white families that are rich till this day, and those people benefit till this day. Also, the the children of uh, the um, families who own these insurance companies and who profited off of the stock market are, are, are enjoying those riches to this day. They had that money to pass down to those children. Not to mention the 80 some odd communities black people built after reconstruction, which had nothing to do with slavery. This is reconstruction. We had over 80 neighborhoods bombed, burned down, flooded. People were ran off of the property. So there are so many black people in this country who would have had properties and land passed down from their grandparents, but there are white families sitting on those properties today, and they get to pass it down to their children who are benefiting off of that. Yes. That's generational, generational, that's stolen generational so I'm willing wealth. So I'm willing to concede some of this kind of for the sake of argument. Um, but I but still you cut I, me off, and I really wasn't even done. Because I'm, I'm sorry. So much when somebody gives that. when somebody gives a long pause, I assume they're done. But I would like to take it a point at a time. Is that okay? So so listen here, dude. We're gonna take it the way I say take it. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. So you don't want to go. Po- you want to want to go point by point. Hold on. Let Atlanta plan. No, you're gonna you're gonna you're, you're gonna let me say what what the hell I'm saying, right? Okay. And you're gonna wait for it. Go ahead. And then you're gonna respond. Sure. Okay, 
just don't come over here and colonize. I know you guys have like that. Yeah, I know you're a strong woman. Here you roar. Spirit. But can you just can you just make Dude, the point? If you don't shut the fuck up while I'm talking, I will drop you from this panel. Oh no. We don't have to have this conversation. There's four viewers. Oh no. So he cheated on his wife. Quid pro quo. He's been impeached twice. And he smells. He probably doesn't brush his teeth. His wife probably doesn't love him. I hate to say it, but I had to drop you because you can't have a civil conversation. Hello, Andrew. Good evening. What you got for me? Uh, good evening. Can you hear me okay? I've got you loud and clear. Oh, How are you doing? Pleasure to meet you. Uh, thanks for having me on this evening. I did want to dive into the prompt, if you don't mind. Republicans don't know much about the border. Um, so the the first thing is, is that I think you and I can agree, probably most people don't know very much about political issues in the United States or in any nation that they're in. Some nations, some people maybe are a little bit more proactive than others. Uh, but in this particular nation, basically politics runs on rhetoric and it runs on mass media. And people mostly just kind of regurgitate talking points. Like, you can agree that that's true on both sides, right? To a certain extent. <laughs> well, I mean, like, you, you have these conversations, I'm guessing, you know, every other evening or a few evenings a week at least. Um, hasn't it been kind of your take that most people who call in are at least fairly uninformed about the political processes of the United States? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that that happens the other direction, just so you know, of, um, you know, progressive callers call into conservative shows, this type of thing. It's exactly the same thing, just in reverse. People tend to run on emotions, and that's why rhetoric and politics is so important. Uh, so when you say Republicans don't know much about the border, I would counter and say neither do progressives. Most, In fact, I would just say most I'm people. Progressive. What's that? I'm progressive. Yeah, I know, but you knowing a lot about the border does not mean progressives know a lot about the border in general. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm teaching. Yeah, so um, what is your stance, if, you, if I may ask, on what U.S. policy should be on the southern border? In regards to what? Immigration and dealing well, yeah, with illegal immigrants. Yeah, and that's I can ask you specifically what are you talking about because the border— is very complicated so are you talking about the influx and dealing with my well i just told you i'm talking about policy specifically in dealing with illegal immigrants well illegal are the ones that are convicted the ones coming into the united states haven't been convicted of a charge well you can be doing something this is kind of pedantry right because you can be doing something illegal even if you're not convicted of it well, you can be charged with doing something illegal. It doesn't make it illegal. No, you can be says. doing something illegal, even if you're never charged for it. So, for instance, you can break into somebody's house, never be charged, but you did something illegal. You have to be found guilty in order. No, to you to still be, would yes. be doing something illegal, even in if the United you're. United States, Andrew, are we not innocent until proven guilty? By the court system, that's true. But philosophically, it's matters. not true. No, no, no. It's not what matters because law is is only built around this idea that we must find you innocent until proven guilty for it to be fair. That does not mean in reality you have not done something illegal, though. So you, con you convict somebody based off feelings, but not in the, and not in the justice system. I don't, well, so I, I'm, I'm just, I want to be sure that we're not speaking past each other. Do you agree that if a man goes in the street and uh, unalives another man, in a way which is unjustified, he just feels like doing it, that he did something illegal even though he has not actually been prosecuted for it yet. Do you agree that that's true? Well, you got to look at it. There's a lot of confounding things you have to think about. What are the confounding so things that you have to that, think about? Well, it could have been a heat of passion. It could have been No, 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 but it's baked into the hypothetical that he unalived, unjustified. So he, he basically... Uh, I can't say the word, but it starts with an M, right? Well, it's alleged, and I'm a person of rule and law, and mm -hmm. in the United States, you're innocent until proven guilty. Yes, and according to the law, guilty, yes. Then you did, then you broke the law. Yeah, yeah, according to the law, that's true. However, somebody could be committing a crime in front of you, which gives you justification to do things you could not ordinarily do to them, and they have not been prosecuted of anything. They've not been charged with a single crime. They've not been found guilty of anything. However, if somebody's conducting a crime in front of you, 
How come you then have justification to do things you could not ordinarily do to them if they were not committing a crime, sir? Because I believe in the Constitution of the United States. I believe that we all have rights, including those that commit or allegedly commit heinous crimes. And we built the adversarial justice system so we can confront the alleged charges. And once we convict them, now we can... Uh, definitely this does not uh, answer my punishment. question. So let me restate the, does, let me restate, the, let me restate the question. If somebody breaks I into your home, are you justified you are in defending yourself? Off a feeling about something that you probably don't know exactly what happened. Okay, if somebody breaks into your home, are you justified then in defending yourself versus if somebody you invite into your home, you're not then justified in, you know, using well, you're force. Talking about my curtilage. There's a law that protects me. Right, but nobody's been prosecuted. Nobody's been found guilty of anything. Nobody's been been prosecuted. Nobody's been they they haven't even that had a single defense. right. And I'm not being charged with anything, and if I do get charged with something for defending my home, I go to court. Well, and it, I could be found guilty or not. Guilty. Sure, that's that true. Point. That's true. But but this goes back to your earlier point that you can be doing something illegal, whether or not here, here, you're ever just, charged. No, you can't evade yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you need to answer great, it. Andrew. Hold on a second. I don't need to answer anything. No, I'm you're just going to run away from it. No, no. I'm going to tell you this much. Okay. okay. I'm very familiar with court systems and practices. Mm -hmm. You are innocent until proven guilty in the United States, and I think a lot of people lose uh, sight of that. Trump was innocent until he was proven guilty, and he was proven guilty by a jury of his peers. Okay. Now, somebody in these hypotheticals uh, witnesses somebody doing something they charge them with a crime and they have to be seen in court. They can plead or they can say uh, not guilty and then go through the process. Right. No, that's so not that's correct. That's not America actually correct. So so let's it let's go. Correct. So here I'll, I'll demonstrate it for you. Do you agree that if, if, if a woman is being attacked sexually in front of me, that I can then do something to the assailant of her, even though he's never been convicted of the crime of the essay which he's conducting. Do you agree that that's but true or not, not? You're not convicting them. Of the I didn't say crime. that. I said he's somebody. doing something illegal. You're not understanding. He's doing something process. illegal, correct? You're defending somebody else, yes. And so that person's doing something illegal, correct? But I'm talking about the court Just system. please answer my question. Okay. No, Andrew... You're not going to answer. You're not going to answer it. No, no. Hold on a second. I'm going to answer your fucking question. Yeah, sure you are. Go ahead. In this scenario, somebody is being assaulted. I can come in and defend somebody else. That person that was assaulting that person heads to court. Yeah. They're presumed innocent until proven guilty, regardless if I defended that person. Then it goes to the court process adversarial contest and if they're found guilty then they did in fact do what you alleged them to do, to have done yeah right but none of that now is what's in dispute though in the court yeah, but law. none of that's what we're disputing here so Sorry, the, dis Andrew, the dispute is over Daddy trump is found yeah i didn't mention trump at all i don't I, yeah, yeah that's great i didn't say anything so about trump so I'm not said anything that is false. Yeah. Okay. But you did. So in the beginning of this, You're the, re off on the reason that this, it. the reason that this uh, argument spurned off is because you said a person, an illegal immigrant, cannot be doing something illegal until they are convicted. And then when we, when what I press you, with? when I press you, see, would you let me hand? finish my argument first, please? It's a dumb argument. You, then I'm let me make it, and then you can dismantle it. Comes into the United States. I'm sorry, you can't, you time. can't let me make the argument because you're terrified of the argument. Is that right, sir? No, go ahead. Go okay, ahead great. So argument. anyway, so your argument was somebody cannot be doing something illegal until they're convicted. That thus, illegal immigrants are not illegal. However, when I press you on that logically, we determine. Wait a second. People can indeed do things illegal all the time, and that you can then uh, create actions against those people even though they've never had due process. The same exact thing happens on the southern border. Same exact thing. You can be committing a crime even though you're not found guilty, and you can be dealt with as a person who is under suspicion of committing a crime. They're most certainly under suspicion of committing a crime, which is illegally breaking and entering into the United States. Is that it? Okay. So here's what I'll say about that. There are American citizens that cross into the United States entry without inspection between the ports of entry, and we cannot deny an American citizen into the United States. 
regardless of where they're coming in at. So you're saying that they're, they are illegal when in fact some people are not illegal after we vet them. Yeah, but even if so I grant the out, even if I granted hey, the I outliers, I thought I'm sorry, I thought you were I done. You Go ahead. Yeah, you, you, I'm not done yet. Well, when you have a long pause, I assume you're done. I'm not done yet. That's okay. just the way I talk. Right? Okay, well, I didn't know that. Go ahead. Cool. So in the court system, if we're not going to charge them with anything, how are you going to refer them to or refer to them as being illegal? Now, when you say illegally present in the United States, you've already convicted them of entry without inspection. Do you know, Andrew, the law that they are breaking at the border? What's the law they're breaking at the border? I'm asking you, expert. I didn't say I was an expert. Okay. So you're trying to say that they're illegal, but you don't know what makes it illegal to enter into the United States. Well, I, I don't know what the penal code is for breaking and entering in Michigan, but I can still tell you when someone's breaking and entering. Okay. So tell me what... Hang on, hang on. It does it logically follow, sir, that I can determine what is breaking and entering even though I don't know what the penal code for it is. Is that true or false? That's false. It's false? You, I just Yeah, because you don't know if they're an American citizen. I see. So if somebody breaks into my home, I got to say, finish. wait a second, man. Why I don't know the penal code. I can't. Because I don't know the penal code, I can't defend myself, sir. Code, I can't. <laughs> because I don't know the penal code, I can't defend myself. I'm here for a civil conversation. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, cope, dude. So I'll tell you this much. In the United States, you're innocent until proven guilty. There are an American citizens that come into the United States in between the ports of entry, and we can't not we cannot deny them entry. <laughs> so we have to vet them. We have to determine their citizenship. And at some point or another, they're gonna have to see the judge. And the judge determines whether or not their entry without inspection. It is a misdemeanor crime under 8 U.S.C. 1325, plain and simple. So just because you sound confident and you try to overspeak, it doesn't mean you have any experience at the border. Don't need it. You understand? Don't have to have it. So. It's not necessary, Coper. All right. I'm here for a civil conversation, and if you can't handle it, then just leave. He's there to prattle. Or I'll boot you up. Yeah, there we go. What makes that objective and not subjective? Like, for instance, because, murder would be subjective. Yeah, but but it's accepted. not though, right? So, for instance, if you take uh, take uh, uh, murder, which is the unjustified unaliving of somebody, there are different societies which have criteria for what unjustly unaliving somebody means. So, even murder would be subjective, right? He's proving your own point because before you, what you consider barbaric acts, then again, are also subjective. Well, then if so that's the case, then there's no problem with colonizing them, right? Because prospectively, no. everybody's preference is no. equal. Therefore, they can never do an immoral action against another society. Well, subjectively, we have like a, a subjective frame of ethics, right? What gives you what gives you the right, like ethically right, right? What gives Be, you the right? Well, ethically? I'll explain it. So if if all if all you're saying is that all ethics and morals are just perspective and they're, they're only preference-based, then okay. you could never make an argument that a larger society's preferences are less valid than a smaller society. So if the bigger society said our oh, preference, right. it, our so preference is, right. no, this is your worldview, not mine. Your this world, your so worldview, your, your worldview's right. entailment is everything is preference-based. So if everything is preference-based, you can't get mad at somebody for colonizing you. That's their preference. She kind of, well, she made me stare off the point. All right, so real quick, Andrew. Um, so yes, there are instances where some may believe that murder is uh, is okay. However, that is not the overwhelming majority, right? Well, no, no, no. Hang on, hang on. I'm not saying that they're saying murder is okay. Yeah. I'm saying they're saying there's different criteria for what a murder is. It's justified. Yes, it's correct. Yeah. There's different criteria where it's justified. Yeah. However, correct. the example that you gave is a very small minority relative to, you know, universally accepted uh, majority. Yeah, but why is a universally accepted majority and their preferences more or less valid than a small tribe's? Because it, it should be, don't you think? No, don't well, it should be is not an argument for justification. Why? Why should it be? 
because oh. murder is simply wrong. That is an objective fact. Murder How is that an is... objective fact? It's just an assertion. You don't I have think some... that murder is objectively I wrong. Wanna, wrong I want to say that not everyone. Re on the well, panel but regardless is of what I believe, you, making the assertion that it is doesn't mean it is. Well, no, no. Okay, so you think? What do you think about just ethics in general and like morality? You just think that? Well, I think I, me personally, I think that, that morality and ethics is um, is objective. However, uh, who cares ultimately if if you say that all morality just boils down to a subjective preference? Then you can never make an argument against colonization because their subjective preference for colonizing is just as valid as the subjective preference to not be colonized. Well, I don't know why you're making the argument that something is subjective, and then you say, "Well, I actually believe that it's subjective." Well, who? Can, why? Why can't I do an internal critique regardless of what my ethical standards are? That makes no sense. You're not following your own logic. No. First of all, first of all, wait a second. I am following yeah. my own logic. I'm doing an internal critique. So this is what you believe. You believe all ethics and morals are subjective. And if that is the standard, no, how can you ever assert colonization is wrong? I don't get that. Wait a minute. I said, no, I didn't say all. I said certain, a lot of, a lot of ethics are objective, right? But then, give in, then tell me what them. makes them objective. Like being gay, for instance, right? Yeah, that's subject, that is a subject of whether there's ethically right or wrong. And I'm actually religious, believe it or not. Yeah, but, but tell me what makes but, it objective. What makes it objectively right or wrong? When it's a, when it's an overwhelming majority, not just. Oh, no. Majority, so so wait. So you're appealing to the majority. Guideline. What my guideline is. You're so you're it's, telling me that the, if the majority says tomorrow that we're all um, going to wear swastikas, that that means it's morally correct that we do so. It would be yes. Why it, is it, always it would be okay. So then, if the the overwhelming, so if the overwhelming majority, so so hang on, I just want to make sure. So if the overwhelming majority said tomorrow that they can sa whatever women that they want whenever they want, that would be moral, correct? If as humans we truly believe that, which by the way we would not. Then yeah, yes, but if we did, then yes. Reason why we don't do well, I see. What? So, 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 it, so as long as, so as long as the overwhelming majority believe a thing, then anything that they do is justified in your worldview. Do you think that's insane? If, sir, sir, do you realize how insane that, that is to say? Mom, I'm scared. No, Come get me. How insane your example is. You're giving a, you're giving an example that is simply not true, right? Yeah, hypotheticals are designed to test the logic. They don't have to be based in reality. The reality is that. the extension of your logic states that if the supermajority of people believe in X, then X is justified and moral, no matter how heinous it is. And I completely Let me ask you this. Yes. <laughs> diving into this, though, isn't that kind of silly? Like if you're going to go to another country, for instance, you would have to conform to their rules, regulations, laws and customs. And so if the majority of a nation has customs which are based on their ethics and their ethics are Christian, what do you you should conform to those things saying that we should just create a boundary seems silly to me it seems like a conformity is a good thing in this instance don't we want christian ethics no why no, not that's like why that's why christians fight so hard for christian nationalism because they want a christian nation to where they can run literally everybody's lives off of what the bible yeah, says. but secularists but want the same it's thing to be a melting pot of different cultures no 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 wait both. wait we're, dude we wait. are supposed to respect no them. we're not supposed wait we're not supposed to be a melting pot of all religious dispositions that was never the intention of the united Nobody states said all. I said multiple. well but what does that mean multiple we're going to have to have a singular ethic we can't for instance have people who are diametrically opposed to the worldview of most americans uh integrate in the melting pot there's going to be some metal that doesn't mix in very well i mean surely you understand that right what are you trying to say there they're like muslims can't come to the country well i'm saying if you were to have a uh like a let's say a 50 30 split um and then the rest were secularists and 30 percent were muslim 50 percent were were christian and the rest were whatever that probably wouldn't bode well you you still want to have a super majority for some type of singularity for ethics i mean obviously that would be good you yourself would probably claim that you would want the majority to be secularist right 
Yeah, yeah, but I think secular can still respect religious boundaries. Yeah, but I think that Christians can also respect religious boundaries by by using your logic no, of no, saying, no. hang on, hang on, let me finish, I'm almost done. But by you saying, I would prefer that secularists have the majority is the same as me saying I wish Christians had the majority. Because Christians would still be respecting the boundary, they would just want the majority to be inside of their worldview, just like you want. I would argue that secularists respect religious boundaries much more than Christians now do nowadays. Prove it. Secularists will still um, argue for people's right to um, practice their religions, but like religious people still send their children to religious camps, religious schools, and do not really give them a choice in religion, and they try to push that on everyone they can. No, the, the opposite's true. Secularists are doing this. Secularists say... 100% of the country isn't Christian. Why should we have the... In, under God we trust, in God we trust, on our currency, which is supposed to represent the entire country's monetary value. We well, should not have that. Wait, it wait, doesn't, wait. It doesn't represent 100% of the country. So maybe... Yeah, but using currency at all, places, using currency at all doesn't all represent... We'll say one nation under God. Okay, but but that's There's silly. Like wait, wait, hang on. To make other people of other faiths say that. Yeah, but let me, let me refute this. Not everybody in the country even wants to use currency. Maybe all of them want to use digital currency. Maybe none of them want to ever use the dollar. Maybe some people want to go to the bartering system. We can't institute policy on what a minority percentile of the population wants because it makes them feel good. That's absurd on its face. You would never govern that way in a million years. Oh, my God. We're not talking. You can. Have That's not even like a religious concept of like money. What does that have what? to do with what? what? Do Listen to my that? argument. Hang on. Refute my actual. Boundaries, we have to change up our yeah. Let me get. No, you're saying that. You're wait. Ways. Wait. You're saying that. Let me. Let me. Let's go back to the argument. What you're say. What you just said was. Who was straw but manning not. Again? Hang on. I'm not straw manning. I'm actually going directly to your argument. And let me steel man your argument so that you know I'm not straw manning you. Your oh, argument sorry. to me was. Wait a second, sir. But. Not everybody in the country is Christian, so why would we have God on the dollar bill, which most people use? But the refutation to that is the same exact logic. What about all the people who don't want to use the dollar bill or want to use a different type of currency? It's the same exact logic. We're not going to apply the ethic to the entire nation based on what a slim majority wants. That's absurd. The reason why we apply a monetary value across the board is because for order in society to function smoothly, that is something that's necessary. And it's not a religious value that you need to respect other people's like opinion on because it doesn't disrespect religious values. It re disrespects opinions about how, how they can think you say society. what does or does not disrespect religious values if you yourself aren't a part Are of the religion? Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Let me finish. I just let you make your argument. Let me make my retort. Go How can it. you make the affirmative claim this does or does not disrespect the religious majority when the religious majority themselves claim that it does? And when they're polled, they say that it does. And they are in the majority. Why should we create policy to kiss secularist asses? Why should we do that? That seems absurd to me. Secularists would not do that for us. They wouldn't say, well, the majority of you are Christian, and so therefore we should do blah. They would never do it. Why should we respect people who don't respect us? Okay, you're kind of repeating yourself. I was just saying, like, do you, is that a thing? Is that genuinely a thing? Like, Christians want to go back to the barter system? They don't want to use currency? No, I'm not saying Christians. I'm saying I was refuting your logic. I was saying if your logic is, but not everybody does X, but that would apply to secularists as well. Not everybody does X there. Or maybe many secularists don't mind if God is there. Or maybe many secularists follow Christian ethics, but don't follow the God of Christianity. Using the argument ad populum is a bad argument. Argument ad populum? Yeah, that would That's be like an argument uh, appealing to the majority. Okay. Yeah. You're the one appealing to majority because if you're saying it's a majority Christian country, they can run it how they want. No, no, no. I was giving you an internal critique. So I was showing you that if you were to make the claim, I want to have a secularist nation because they reflect our values the best or the values you want to see in the country the best. I want a Christian nation because it reflects the values that I want to see. 
Why am I wrong? I'm not saying that we should adhere to the quote unquote tyranny of the majority. What I'm asking you specifically is why it is that if you want to have a secular nation, why it is that I shouldn't advocate we have a Christian nation. What's actually wrong with me doing that? Because secularists today want to re protect religious rights to be able to practice their religion freely. If Christians run the nation, that same respect will not be equally a people's right to practice their religion. Yeah, so what's wrong with people practicing their religion in the majority and governing from that? How can you make the claim that we respect your religion? We just don't respect it if it's in the majority. Most people believe it and govern from that. That's not respecting the religion. That's the opposite. That's trying to oppress the religion. Religion has rules that everyone needs to follow. Secularism does not. Yeah, Secularism, yes, it can does. Can you murder people under secularism, sir? That is such a bad rebuttal. No, how is it a bad not. retort? Can you murder people under secularism? Where's the... Okay, that's it. Ant Shut up. Give me the dude, answer my please. question. Please, Don't be bad please. faith, bro. Don't be bad Andrew, faith. you're so bad faith. Give me the atheist No, you're Bible. being bad faith. You're I just really You just said faith. religious people have values that everyone must follow. Don't secularists say you cannot it's murder. Isn't Andrew, that a I value you no must follow? To follow? I mean, there's no set Bible for us to follow. That's not a, that our claims to, the, uh, our claims to ethics and morality are malleable. Oh, so murder's you malleable in your worldview? Right. You cannot argue what is right when you point to a fucking scripture. Why did you why did well, you mute yes, me for a great back and forth? Why stupid. why wait. Well, you didn't let me finish and you weren't listening. Well, but we're having a great back and forth, right? No, we're not cuz you keep cutting me off. Bro, bro, wait a second. Are you saying that murder is malleable in the secular framework? No. Oh, okay. Then why did you just get done saying that Every, everything in the secular murder framework murder. is malleable and not in the religious murder. framework? Did you just murder. lie to me, sir? Did you just lie? Go ahead and repeat yourself. <laughs> did you just lie when you said yes, everything thing. is malleable in the oh, in so the secular framework? The answer. My bad. Continue asking You just told me to restate it. Restate it again. Okay, well, it. I'll restate it again. You literally just said everything is malleable in the secular framework. When I said, is murder malleable in the secular framework? That's you said so no. That you so that's a performative it. contradiction. Um, you want... <laughs> Yeah, not every single mor moral claim is going to be Why changed. do you keep muting me before I even finish the question? Because you're repeating it for a third time. And well, I you asked me to, though. I said it wasn't genuine. Okay, so let me let me repeat. Let me repeat what I said. Okay. No. no. Dude, I'm not going to let okay, you Okay, fine. Then you ask the have, you ask the like query so then. That's fine. On. There's no point in having a back and forth. You won't allow it. I understand. Like, am I going to be able to answer your question? Because you just. I haven't you know, asked you one. You didn't ask me. No, if murder what was I malleable. said was it seems you like. You didn't it, ask me three times if murder was malleable. Well, no. What I said was you just got done saying that it was not. But earlier, you said that the secular framework, everything is malleable, and in religion, it's not, which is a performative yeah, contradiction. Well, let me finish my answer to your question, but okay. you didn't. Okay. Go ahead and finish. Thank you. I would appreciate it. Yeah, obviously there are very strong moral. You're very upset, man. Like Calm down. Let's just have the convo. All right. If you're just gonna bait, I'm good. No, I'm not baiting. All right. If you're just <laughs> gonna bait, I'm good. <laughs> Excuse no. me. That's fine. I can just rebut you when you can't interrupt <laughs> He's me. So, so I'll mad, just finish dude. my point because that was like the fifth interruption to that one question. <laughs> Can you be any more bad faith, dude? Let's Your watch interpretation him go. of my claim that we don't have a Bible to follow is that we can change our minds on murder. That's what he said. That's how you took that point. Genuinely. No, he said it. Obviously, everything is there valuable. Are very strong claims that we are very unlikely to change our minds on <laughs> because it is very commonly understood that it is immoral and it causes a lot of harm. But there are things that are a little bit more in the gray area that we can argue ethically, which I think you would agree on. I would hope so about the education system, about um, people arguing when people can start drinking or when people can start driving or when we should issue IDs or when people should be given the right to vote or when people are smart enough to make certain decisions in life. Like these are things that are very malleable that we can argue. People are in. Yeah, if we're going to talk about murder, um, 
You're a Cope. Christian. I'm assuming world is just going to flip flop. That's what he said. Though. And change he said, their mind he about said murder, everything in murder atheism being okay. is malleable. How many people um, still flip flop and change their mind about capital punishment or about pulling the plug? These guys are fantastic are at you arguing when you're not there. Aren't they? Person that are very strong moral claims that people would make under religion, but that is very malleable under secularism. That people could still argue um, with their faith or without and what make ethical claims about. It. Like, I haven't made a single religious argument. Well, haven't up. made. You shut up, okay. you stupid. Wow. <laughs> I like the pride pentagram, by the way. Thank you. Happy Pride Month. Uh, good afternoon. How are you? We're doing great. How are you doing? Good. Uh, sorry, you, you did actually say I need your name in the chat. That's why I put that. I'm so sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, no big deal. Um, so it, it looks like uh, Age of Pagan Magic. So I'll just be up front with you guys. Um, I'm an Orthodox Christian myself, and I was just kind of wondering what your worldview on this was. Your our worldview on uh, Orthodox Christianity? Uh, no, on uh, Pagan Magic. Yeah, so we're, we're all different, Kevin's. Pagan, Celtic is uh, Celtic pagan. Celtic pagan. <laughs> I am an eclectic pagan witch. I mean, we all have different views here, um, so you have to get a little bit more specific, really. Well, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Let I'm me... also I'm an herbalist, so uh, okay. Well, let me get let me get more specific. So I'd like to give you my best argument that I have against magic and see what you guys think about it. Um, okay. Okay, so. My understanding of, as to the way that magic works is that it's a pushing of your will. And with this pushing of your will, the universe will basically fulfill whatever your magical request is. Uh, there's variations thereof of how people view this. But if that is true, and you are then using your will, and the universe then controls other people to deliver to you things that you want, how are you not actually controlling other people's will? That's not how it works, though. Okay, how does it work? We don't... Okay, um, here's the thing. Magic in and of itself is neutral, all right? It is neither good nor bad. And all magic is, is learning how to work with the energies that are around us, the energies of the universe. And if we work with a pantheon, earning the respects of our, of our gods and goddesses so that they will agree to work with us to give our our want an extra oomph. Here's the thing. Whenever we do a casting, we also have to do, which is like we write a spell or we make our wishes known to the universe. People do it in different ways. We have to do what is called acting in accord, which means I needed a place to live. And this is my own story, not anyone else's. I needed a place to live after I left my ex with my son, right? Okay, so my son and I then, um, while I'm in a hotel room and working seven days a week, and, and my son is, is, is spending seven days a week with another woman that I love still to this day who charged me hardly anything at all because of my situation, I started doing, I started writing myself little, uh, little uh, binding runes and whatnot, okay, in sigils. And I would carry them on me at all times. And, and the sigil was basically, I need a safe place for my son and I to live, okay? So right after that, a wa another waitress that I was friendly with offered me her basement, her entire finished basement, until I could find a place to live. And right after that, I was moved up the list for section eight, even though it was a two year waiting list, I somehow got moved up and all of, all of a sudden got a voucher that meant I could go rent my own place. Okay, but right this would that, um this would actually make my point. So no, wouldn't no, no, that, no, 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 because wouldn't that no, have affected because, the will of both your friend and then in the section no. eight housing situation, wouldn't somebody else have been affected in order for you to bump to the Do front of the line? Okay, hold on. Do you pray? Do you yes. pray for things? Do you pray for help with things? I don't pray Do for you... things. No, I mean, for help with things. Like, uh, like... No, I don't, I don't usually pray for help with things either. I, I pray in what are called affirmations. 
So I all I ever do is is thank the Lord. I don't I don't ask the Lord for things. No. Okay. Other people Fine. do. Do you consider that going against? Yeah, other but you're, wills? you're you're but you're not arguing with him. You're arguing with me. No, I'm saying what other people do. Other people you know mm -hmm. do ask for things like, "Oh God, please, please let them be okay. Please let them be okay." Right? Mm -hmm. Oh God, please da 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 da. All I said was, and I wasn't specific, so no, I'm not going any, against anyone's wills. All I said was, I need a safe place to live. Yeah, I, I, under, I understand what you're saying, but think of it from my perspective here for just a second. So if your friend, let's say, ordinarily would not have offered you the finished basement or in the Section 8 housing, you would not ordinarily have been bumped up absent the efficacy of this magical spell then necessarily no, got, these people's wills would that. have to have been affected by your magical spell. How's that no, not slavery, essentially? That's not how... Okay, hold, you, on. Not not how that that hold on. Hold on, hold on. Wow. Okay, hold on. What are you asking on if our magic goes against people's spiritual consent? Uh, well, I'm saying it, it has to necessarily affect their will. If they're going to do things they ordinarily would not do in order to get you something okay. that you want. Okay, so then that brings me to my next question. Um, Christians don't have free will. They have freedom of choice. Okay. Nobody has free will. Okay. So what? I don't understand how that contends with my argument. So my argument is, is that if you're doing a magical spell... And because you're, how can you're, you go against somebody's free will if well, they I'm don't gonna, have it? I'll explain. So, so nobody has. So, if nobody has free will, then does that mean that you should affect other people's wills for your own benefit? How can you affect someone's will when they don't have it? So, who? They have freedom of so, choice. They don't have freedom. Okay, of will. so you're affecting their choice then. Not directly. No. How are you not affecting because, it directly? Just if they... because they, just because we manifest something and give the energy to good karma and luck, mm -hmm. and it decides to play its game, does not mean it. It goes against anybody's freedom of choice or will. Well, let's we did just, not tell them. We well, did let not me, direct them. Let me ask you this then, and, if, the, if that is true. Clarify. If first, you were to have a... First, wait, wait, wait. First, uh, please allow me to clarify. Sure. The only reason, the only reason why, okay, the reason why I got the basement was because she saw how hard I was working. She and I were already friendly, and she wanted to help me save up money. Then why did you need the magic? Uh, 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 because I needed something for me. I needed to put it out there in the universe that I needed a place to stay, a safe place to stay, not a hotel room that I had to pay for every night. So, and the reason why I got the voucher got moved up on the list was because unbeknownst to me, mm -hmm. my state had just started a, where you, if you fit a certain criteria, right? Single mother working, trying to go to school, you got moved up on the list. So then the magic because didn't work. You were already it did. Well, how could the magic have worked if you because have if you have natural explanations uh, okay. for the Andrew, phenomenon? You're gonna either let, let her sit here and explain it or you can drop my panel. Yeah, you didn't. Well, even I mean let I've only said a few story. words. Okay, I, but you need to stop interrupting and let her rebuttal. You didn't even let me finish the story. That right after I got the voucher, I found a I found a little condo which was right within my budget. Actually, it was a little less, and it was a three bedroom. I was in love with this place. I was in love with the roses, and I I called the woman. We met up. I looked at the place, and she said, "Well, right now there's someone else interested, but they came kind of shady, so I'm not sure." And I looked her right in the face, and I said, "Well, if you can make a decision, just to let you know." I've got a little one. I've got a job right down the street. I've got, you know, I, I've got references and I've got this voucher, which guarantees you your money. And she was like, oh, so the voucher is what the, the voucher and me being a decent person and a hardworking person is what got me that place above it. What helped me was all the other was the setting it up so that it could happen. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I happened, I happened to need to go down that street that day for something completely different when I saw the for rent sign. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, under, the, I understand the, what you're saying. The universe, the universe set it up so that all of these things could happen, right? Like you say, God does. God sets things up so that they well, can I don't, happen. Well, I didn't because say that, though. Because when good things happen, well, when good things happen, you all say, thank God. Yeah, right? uh, okay, but, 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 but here's the thing. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm curious about here is... Either no, you're, not you're either you're accusatory. 
Well, what am I accusing you of? You're accusing me of, of, of turning people into slaves. Well, no, I'm saying that either you you have to necessarily be affecting somebody's will through your magical spells, or the magical spells aren't working, and there's a natural explanation. I don't see and how it could be. I don't see how it could be anything other than that. So, for instance, I'll give you an example. Let's assume I wanted. Let's assume. Let's assume I wanted a bike. I didn't interrupt you the entire time. Why? Why am I not allowed to give you an example? I I didn't. I didn't. I let your whole story go. I didn't interrupt you at all. So Mm -hmm. let's assume you wanted a bike, and uh, you did a bunch of spells to get a bike, and one day you went outside, and lo and behold, there was a bike that somebody brought you who ordinarily would not have brought that bike to you. They just brought it because the universe okay, Andrew, what is your point? told them what is to. Your point? My, point what is, is your point? my point is, is that you're necessarily affecting people's will. No, your point will. is that you're trying to push your religious beliefs on by trying to I haven't even, I haven't said a word of, like I haven't made a single religious argument. Haven't up. made, you shut up, you okay. stupid. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's oh, why we don't roll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and for everybody in the comments, no this is an orthodox <laughs> Christian, by the way. Wow, again, Christian uh, Yeah, love. orthodox Christian. His complaint made no yeah. sense. You're, You're affecting people's will Christian by love. talking. You're affecting people's <laughs> will. Wow, what a jerk. <laughs> I, I you said that people don't have freedom of will, they have freedom of choice. What do you, what do you mean by they don't have freedom of will in that case? <laughs> Okay, I better bail from that live stream. <laughs> uh, I better bail out. <laughs> better bail. Better bail. <laughs> I mean, they were going to kick me anyway. Might as well go out with a bang. (laughs) It's a magical prattle. (laughs) You got to fail. Go, go, go. (laughs) Yeah, that was funny. Wow.